Up next, part two of my Galileo build. Hey guys and welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. Ready to move on now with my Galileo build. As you saw in part one, I completed the figures, so moving on to the interior. These are all parts that are included in the Galileo Shuttlecraft interior parts pack that was released by Polar Lights in late 2022. And of course this will all be fitted into my Galileo model, which, did, which originally did not come with an interior. Uh, so first step was to do some painting. I've actually already applied the first color. And again, as a reminder, what I'm using as my guide for these paint colors are not the colors that come recommended in the instructions, but rather colors recommended by Gary Kerr. He's a gentleman who's well acquainted with the colors used on a lot of these miniatures. He served as a consultant uh, for the Smithsonian when they restored the uh, original Enterprise model. And he's done a number of other things for Star Trek as well. Um, so the first color that I have sprayed on now is called Kind Green. This is the Sherwin-Williams 6457. As I was mixing the colors, I quickly realized it wasn't as easy to come up with a shade that matched that. I thought I had it down. Uh, I did experiment with some colors prior to any of this. And, um, but it turned out as I made a bigger batch, it wasn't quite the uh, shade I was looking for. So it um, took a little bit of trial and error to, to get the final mix. So uh, what I can do for you guys here, the best I can do is to go ahead and provide you the colors I will start with to do my mixing, but you'll have to just tweak them as I did because it was hard to keep track of what I added to finally get to the, um, to the shade here that I wanted. So, um, let me go ahead and first show you the parts that I've painted, at least uh, what I've done so far, and, uh, and then we'll move on from there. So these are the pieces painted here now, and uh, you can see the paint chip next to it. And I know it's hard to appreciate exactly what color this is because I have a cool um, LED light that's shining down on my workbench. Um, so you really do have to check this out in person. And the colors I used to uh, get at least started anyway was to use about 60% white, 10% uh, green, light green blue, and 10% ivory. This is all from the uh, model color collection from Vallejo. And then finally, about 10% of this color here is called Sick Green, also from Vallejo. It's from their um, game color uh, collection there. A lot of people use these to paint uh, gaming figures. And it was a matter of just, uh, like I said, just trial and error, just adding this or that to it, and I finally came to this shade. Um, I guess I would say, if anything, I had to end up adding a bit more ivory for sure to lighten it up. Now, I actually did already apply the second color of green. This is Verde Green 9042, and this was done with a mix of ivory and black green, about an 80-20 mix to start with. Ended up having to add a bit more of the ivory as I went along to lighten it up. And this color was applied to the main instrument panel, the two little sensors that are mounted on the side of the instrument panel the main door, and the door to the aft section. Again, if you want to know more about these paint chips I'm using, uh, please refer to part one, because uh, I do devote some time to talking about these. These were first introduced by Mark Myers on his YouTube channel, and I posted the link to his video down below. All right, let's get started. So let me begin by showing you how the mixing process has gone here. Uh, I am now combining white and beige red to come up with the next color called Likeable Sand. Now, I should have masked off the areas that will be painted with this color, but since I didn't, I have a piece of styrene here that has been painted with kind green, since that is what I will be applying this color over. So after adjusting the mix as best I could, I place it into this mixer. And of course, next is to mask off the areas to be painted. And this is how it turned out. I actually ended up mixing two batches. I ended up applying the first that I made, which uh, actually came out a bit too dark still. So I added yet a bit more white to make a brighter version, and this was lightly sprayed over the first color. And in the end, it turned out a fairly close match. Well, now that the beige colors have been applied, I did spray on a light mist of gloss coat, just to protect the paint. And uh, I have this piece of wood taped onto the back because uh, this piece is a little flimsy. The only thing holding it together here is this small strip of plastic there, and I just don't want to take the chance of cracking it. 
Well, all that was followed by painting the floor next, and what I was trying to match here was Web Gray 7075. And the colors I'm using here, for the most part, are from the model color collection from Vallejo. To achieve this match here, I ended up mixing in neutral gray and basalt gray, or basalt gray. And this match was achieved with about an 80-20 mix. Well, I'm ready to move on to the chairs. These are what the seats look like. You can see it's a nice likeness of the chairs that were seen on the TV show. They come off the sprue pretty easily. You just have to sand away these little remnants of plastic here. But that's not a big deal. wanted to show you now the piece that they will mount onto. And uh, one thing that you can notice is that there's a mold line there. Now, the entire piece is going to be painted black. If you look at this picture from the TV show, you can see the entire assembly, including the chairs, painted black, with the exception of the knobs off to the sides there that are painted silver. So the chances of you really seeing these, um, you know, you could just leave them alone, and uh, you'll probably not really pick them up. But I do want to do away with them. So I wanted just to show you the way I'm going to do it is use my little sander here, this electric sanding tool. I've talked about this on the channel before. And uh, what's nice about this is that you can be pretty precise in the area that you're trying to sand away. So I have a bit that's been mounted onto the sander now. You can see it came in this set. These are bits that I purchased in addition to have a number of different shapes for various applications. And uh, so I'm going to take the little tool here now and um, just direct it to that little mold line. And you can see we can do away with it without having to sand away the entire surface or the entire face here. So if you get a hold of one of these, it's pretty helpful. Um, unfortunately, I can't direct you to a website that has this particular model for sale. The one that I use, Mecca Warehouse, has been out of stock for some time, but you might want to check back. Uh, a couple other modelers have told me there are a few different models available of something similar, so you might just want to check out Electric Sander, but um, really nice, helpful tool to have. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up and show you the chairs when they're fully assembled and painted. Okay, well the chairs are completed now. They were painted with black and then sprayed with a gloss coat and the knobs were painted with Vallejo silver. Well, I'm going to move on to the main console and first let me begin by showing you what it's supposed to look like. Here's a shot showing the center panel and you can see there's a lot of black paneling around the gauges. And here is a shot of the panel that's to the left of center that Spock sits in front of. Now, what they've provided here are these clear parts that are supposed to mount into these slots. They're molded in clear to facilitate lighting, but as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'm only going to be providing lighting for the ceiling. I'm not going to do anything with these instruments here. So, since that's the case, um, my idea is to paint these from the back side. I'm going to paint them black, and then I'm actually going to paint in a lot of this detail here. I'm still going to use some of these decals. These, again, are the decals they've provided for this. This instruction suggests taking this, cutting it out, and laying it on top of here and using a softener so that it would conform to all of this contour here. That's not going to work out that great. I'm pretty confident that's just going to end up looking like a piece of film sitting on top of there. So um, I'm going to cut some of these decals free, including this rectangular piece and these circular gauges to fit into all these little areas here. But the rest of it, I'm just going to paint in by hand. And hopefully that'll work out. One alternative, if you don't want to mess with this, is just cut out a piece of flat styrene and, and um, fit them to these slots here, paint them black, and then lay this on top of here. I just think it's a shame to lose out on some of this detailing here. So that's why I'm going to try this first. Okay, and the same approach, by the way, is going to be taken with the computers. I'm actually not going to use any of the decals, actually. I'm just going to paint these, and uh, the housing is going to be painted light gray, and I'll try to dot in as many of those little buttons as I can. Okay, well hopefully this will look right. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, well this is how the console turned out. I'm very pleased uh, with the end results here. Uh, couple, one thing that I would do differently, I, I did think that the applying the black paint worked out great. Um, however, um, I would apply the black paint on the surface rather than the backside. 
Uh, my logic behind doing it this way was I just wanted to retain the finish on the surface here from the uh, clear styrene. But the problem is when you glue these into place, you have to apply the glue here, and that seeps onto the black paint, and it will do away with your black paint. Uh, now, it's not a problem if it's an area that you can reach, but there's a potential, and luckily it didn't happen to me, that it might seep into these little tight corners or spaces, and you won't be able to get to that after the fact. So, um, just apply the black paint on the surface, and then use a gloss coat, and you can have a better chance of avoiding any mishaps there. Uh, I didn't record the decal application because there was nothing special about that. Uh, as for the decals, I ended up using the screen that you see here, uh, these two small decals here, and the ones that fit into these gauges. And on this side, I use this strip and this round decal here. And of course, uh, I use this one as well as the one that goes onto this screen. Um, so as long as you've got a tiny brush, and of course you need a steady hand, but um, you know it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be to paint this stuff. And one other thing, as for the, the decals, you do really need to have this on hand. The Microset and Microsol Solutions, this one helps to not only soften, but uh, improve adhesion. And this one really helps to set the decal in place and help to conform the decals to any contoured or regular surfaces. And you can see that it does a great job. You can even see, as you look at this strip here, there was a grid pattern that was printed on that plastic, and you can see it does come through. Okay, time to move on to the computers now. Okay, well the last color to mix here was the SW6394, which is applied to these uh, tanks here. These are the three tanks that are located in the aft section. You're not really going to see them a whole lot, but you'll be able to see them through the front window. They're going to position right next to each other. There are some seams as the parts join together. I did sand away a lot of that, but it didn't spend too much time with that. Um, for these seams, I ended up just applying some super glue, letting that dry a little bit, and then just using some um, 400 grit sandpaper to get rid of that. And uh, for the color, I ended up using 50% uh, white and 50% of this dark sand color to begin with. Sprayed that on. It was a little bland, so I needed to make it a little bit more yellow. So to that mix, I added in a couple drops of the flat yellow and a couple drops of ivory, and that seemed to do the trick. And next are the computers. These are the ones that mount along the sides of the interior of the shuttlecraft. They were painted with Vallejo's Sky Gray. And as you can see here, just taking a 20 out brush to dot on the little buttons there with various colors, just randomly choosing different colors. And I think they turned out pretty well. And before moving on here, just one quick detail about this back panel. This is the one with the door. And uh, you can see these panels are both painted white. You can see in the reference picture, that's the way they're supposed to be. And unfortunately, they did not provide a decal for this one. Out of any of the things they could have provided a decal for, this would have been the easiest one. Uh, but you just have to end up painting them, so I just masked them off and painted them both white. And uh, they have a decal for this one, but again, I did not use that. I just took my fine brush and added the paint on the buttons. And the other thing I wanted to show you here real quick is the sliding door. It's essentially a miniature pocket door that goes into this slot right here. This, of course, is the front piece. And uh, what I'm hoping to do is what Mark Myers did with his, and that's simply to be able to tilt the shuttle back and forth to allow movement of that door from one side to the other. And I'll give you the opportunity to see through this door to the aft section. And one other thing before I start assembly, I wanted to draw your attention to these two pieces here. Just wanted to confirm that they are gray, as you can see in the reference picture, just in case you're interested. You can see they provided some decals here. This one did not sit really well. I should have trimmed it a bit closer into the circle there. Um, there's a decal for this section, and there is one provided here for this one. I ended up just dry brushing some silver. All right, let's go ahead and get started with assembly. So assembly began by inserting the seats, and one thing that made this step easier was to slightly open up those holes a little bit with a drill. Next was to attach all the fixtures along the interior walls. And just as with the seats, I opened up these holes along the floor for this back wall as well. Well, the cabin's now been almost fully assembled. Of course, we still have the ceiling left. 
And I have to say I'm very impressed with all of the details they provided here. Uh, for the most part, it's a pretty accurate representation of the ship. I know there are probably some inaccuracies there with the instrument panels, but not really too obvious. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention is I did modify the Scotty figure. Um, the figures, because I was playing around with them here to see how they would look, are going to be positioned in the same way they were at the beginning of the episode. So we'll have Spock here, uh, Latimer, we've got Mears, Scotty, Boma, McCoy, and Gaetano. So when I put them in the position, Scotty had his arm pointing forward, and I thought that looked pretty silly. So I took a saw, and poor Scotty, I took off his arm and uh, repositioned it so that it looks like the hand is just resting on his knee. Uh, it wasn't too hard to do, but I think he'll look more natural sitting there like that. Well, uh, before we move on to lighting, actually, let me talk about the ceiling panel. This is the side that faces the cabin. And as you can see, there is some trim here. But if you look at these reference pictures, you'll notice the trim is a bit heavier than that. And uh, so Lou Dalm also pointed this out in his bill. I'm going to go ahead and follow his lead. And what I'm going to be using here is this 0 0.08 by 0 0.180 inch uh, strip from Evergreen Scale Models. And you can see it is the exact same size as what's on there. But it's going to allow us to provide a heavier looking trim. Well, here we have it completed. I think it turned out well. And I painted this the same color as uh, the interior walls of the shuttle, because that's what it looked to be in the, uh, in the television show. All right, let's go ahead and move on to lighting now. So um, the kit provides a clear piece to put here. And like I said, I'm not going to use that. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is light the ceiling. And you'll notice, let me refer you back to this reference picture, that there is a diffuser on that light. And I was trying to think of ways to kind of come up with something that would replicate that look and this is what I came up with. This is uh, stuff that you use for embroidery. It's called plastic canvas and it's this, I believe this is the size here, 10 mesh because they do sell others with larger holes. And you can see it actually looks pretty good here. Um, I also like the fact that it's a bit translucent as a diffuser would be. And so the idea is to um, cut a piece of this out, and then we're going to use SMDs to light the ceiling. I know a number of people have used strip lighting, but I ran a few ideas by Evan Designs, and uh, they sent out, they were kind enough to send out a sample of this um, string, mega LED string. It comes with 12 mega SMDs attached to it. Now obviously we're not going to use all 12 for this, but uh, this is what the string looks like. And uh, I think four will do the job here. Now, what I plan to do is to mount them onto a, a white piece of styrene plastic. So we'll have the diffuser, the styrene, and these will be mounted on top. And that's simply just to kind of tone down the hot spots, because there will be hot spots with, with these types of LEDs here. But I think that's going to do a good job replicating the uh, look of the lighting that we see on the television show. All right, let's go ahead and do a light test. You can see I have things temporarily taped up here as they are going to be positioned. We've got the SMDs taped to this thin piece of styrene, and the LED string now is hooked into this AA power source. So let's take a look inside the cabin, and let's turn on those lights. Okay, we're getting some nice, good, even illumination throughout the entire cabin. And uh, there are going to be those hot spots up there. There's really not much I can do about that. Now, if you look at this shot from the series, you'll see they had some hot spots up there as well. So I think this is going to work out great. Now, let me take a second to put the figures in. I'm just curious to see how they look under this lighting. And here you go. Yeah, it's pretty much how I imagined it would be. I think the figures look pretty good here under this lighting. Well, this would be a good place to pause, I think. And before I wrap up here, I want to make mention about those yellow tanks that are positioned in the aft section of the shuttle. You'll notice I originally had the uh, tubes that connect them to the wall painted gray. Uh, but if you look at this reference picture, they are, in fact, a white color. So I repainted them. 
And speaking of screenshots, by the way, the ones that I've shared with you here are ones that I've just simply taken with my iPhone as I watched the episode again. Um, if you don't want to be sitting there with your iPhone, <laughs> there is a website called Cygnus x1.net and it is a website that's a tribute to Star Trek and they happen to have tons of screenshots of various episodes uh, on that website particularly the Galileo 7 so I'll post a link to that episode uh, so if you need screenshots and some reference photos check it out okay so part three I will continue on then with uh, the construction of the exterior and uh, completing the project uh, if you have any questions uh, with what I've done so far, feel free to leave a comment down below or email me at intersetamodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.